These next two charts are from the United States Historical Climate Network. These are the measurements of, of the thermometers that are measuring climate change. And, and, and these in particular record the adjustments that NOAA has done to the climate data. Chart on the left, you can see that between 1900 and 1960, NOAA made relatively few adjustments, and they were relatively minor. And then we see that, that for the more recent years, they've been adjusting them upwards. And the adjustments consistently are upwards. They're never adjusting downward. Now, the chart on the right likewise looks at the raw numbers are on the top. The raw numbers demonstrate a fair degree of uniformity. But the adjusted numbers, the old temperatures are cooler and the new temperatures are warmer. Well, the, the different, there's a number of different groups who do global temperature data sets. And they have different methods for dealing with spatial representativeness, missing data, um, changes in temperature, measuring instrumentation, um, adjusting for the time of day, all sorts of different adjustments that they make. And the adjustments, as you can see, are rather huge. Okay, so should we, um, so the, to me, the error bars should really be much bigger if they're making such large adjustments. So we really don't know too much about what's going on in terms of, you know, it's a great deal of uncertainty. Yes, I do believe that we've overall been warming, but we've been warming for 200, maybe even 400 years, okay? And that's not caused by humans, okay? There's natural variability involved. And this is exactly what has not been sorted out. Now, the ocean, the ocean temperature is the current focus of controversy. I mean, the land data sets are sort of starting to agree, but there's a great deal of controversy and uncertainty right now in the treatment of the ocean temperatures. And that has not been sorted out. And so especially looking, you know, in the recent period, if we're trying to sort out what's going on with the hiatus or the pause, we need to look at the satellite data. I mean, this is the best data that we have, and it's global. And we need to sort out the differences between the satellite and the surface observations. And then there's um, the numerical weather prediction, reanalysis, data assimilation systems that give us a global view. And we haven't been really using that for climate pur purposes, and I think we need to. So the work is just starting in terms of trying to sort this out. Now, and Dr. We don't Curry, have... you said something very important there, and that you said the satellite data are the best data we have. Can you explain as a scientist why that's the case? Well, well, it's global coverage. Um, it's not a simple measurement. You have to do, you know, a retrieval and weighting functions, and it's a complex um, problem. But it's reasonably well calibrated and consistent over the last... 30-ish years. And not a single Democratic senator had any response to the satellite data that demonstrates their entire theory of global warming for 18 years hasn't been happening. Yeah, I mean, we need to sort this out rather than ignore it. I mean, this is what I'm concerned about. 